Previously, on Amigo. Population 4,200. Physical size, about a mile square. Nobody's gonna finance a film made in Kansas, Kansas by a bunch of Kansans. So we've had to figure out how to do that ourselves. There's a certain amount of freedom that he has here. He's not bogged down with the Hollywood mentality. To rent a shot maker dolly would cost four or five thousand dollars. We figured out how to make one for maybe two hundred and fifty and put it on a, a trailer that we borrowed from a local farmer. Is that the bat that's gonna crack my skull? Yeah. He reminds me of Hitchcock. You know, Hitchcock was very playful, but very exacting. Well, this is the way he sees it, so how can I make this work? What they're doing is they're deceiving, it seems to me like. This is going to mean something, and this is going to be one of the most brilliant things I'll ever do in my life. And that's something hard to explain. It's true life, and it's a part of me. You know, when you got Ed Furlong, you got a fucking movie. I have to throw away all these celebrities. Oh, no. We have to have somebody from the movie business, because there's no way possibly could a stage manager understand what needs to be done. Anything we can get for free is great. But anything that costs more than $10, I have to put my foot down and say tough. What are the rules for the film business? Nobody knows. We could access more people in one keystroke and sell more copies than if it were sitting on the shelf of Blockbuster. We were being called amateurish because we didn't have a big budget. They don't get it. They owe us right now, they owe us 60000 How much did you spend on the movie? Not as much as you used to. Something under the mini bar, there was a huge bong. You hope that you can get some distributors to come watch it because maybe one of them will buy it. Oh, fat chance. Our producer's rep has now forgotten name of our film. <laughs> I've recently read about how David Lynch is moving to digital so that he doesn't have to rely on a crew either. Now, have you seen phone sex? Money has nothing to do with it. Hollywood is out to line the pockets of the middleman. That was it. To hell with Hollywood. This is the right. theme of uh, the shoot here. That should be the cover. Take from it what you will, right? <laughs> you went shyly at me. I wasn't mistaken. Soon after you took my heart away. Watch Out first came into my life in 2007. When I first read the book, I had no idea how to do it. And I just sort of put it on the back burner for a while while I was working on the documentary, and I, I kept telling myself, oh, I'll, I'll bring it back out every now and again and, and take a look at it and see if it made sense, see if I could figure out how to, how to film it. Because really, it was totally unfilmable. This summer, or spring rather, in April probably, I'm shooting my next film. And um, I know I've sent it to a couple of people and, and people have been talking about it. And um, it's gotten a little out of control because it's not a porno and it's not going to be X-rated, but it will contain scenes that are as graphic as something that you've seen in Caligula or oh, yeah. the film. <laughs> <laughs> the parts, the people on the crew that I'm going to use, I'm just going to have like three or four people. 
um, because I'm going to run the camera myself. I'm going to be my own DP. My new whole method of filmmaking is if I look like a tourist and can take my camera out of my bag like this and walk around the city and film and then put it away before I get arrested, then that's my favorite way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> run and gun, guerrilla filmmaking. Totally. Hello, I'm Nayar Becerra. I'm in consideration for Dr. Mendoza, the man who asked the question, do you not hear the cry of the planet? How does it go? Marriage is not, I do not fuck my wife's vagina. <laughs> the community fucks her vagina. Huh? Well, that's really the line. Yeah, those are the lines. Jesus Christ. It sounds like a Republican committee or something. I want to be in it because I think it's, uh, it's, the script is really interesting. I think it's cool that it is a, um, it deals with sex in a provocative way, which you don't get to see very often. Well, I think a lot of movies go in that direction, and it's insulting to the intelligence that it stops at a certain point. It's like, if you're going to go that far, go all the way with it. Usually when I try and think of like a movie to compare it to that people might understand, I'll use the American Psycho reference, but so it's like American Psycho, but way more interesting and better. But what I like about the script is, you know, you can lure an audience that enjoys that kind of humor into a space where they're suddenly vulnerable to contemplate a subject like, you know, narcissistic behavior or the depths of uh, probing that thought process. Uh, that's what I think is attractive about the script, despite how extreme it goes. Hello, my name is Joseph Sulia. I am the author of the novel Watch Out. I also wrote the first draft of the screenplay for the film. Joseph and I wrote the script together, and we started casting immediately. I mean, I love just the, the grandiosity of that character. I mean, it's just like so fun. I don't know this Riddle Hoover. I remembered being really attracted to the material and remembering that um, it centered around one person, around one man. So I sent Steve a reply, changing the subject to uh, I am your Jonathan Barrows. Movies have their own life form and they will, they will happen when they're supposed to, when you least expect it. And my job as a, a director or filmmaker is to just tap into those energies when I see them sometimes and um, pay attention so that when they come up, you grab them and you go with it no matter what it means. And so I just didn't really expect that it would happen. I, I mean, it almost seemed as if it were just a pleasant illusion and nothing besides a pleasant illusion. I mean, I did trust Steve Balderson, but as you know, I've never actually met the man. I didn't find anything unusual about it, although people, when I've talked to them, say they think it's really, really weird that the author and I have never met. So Steve called me the next day and he was like, do you even realize what this is? Do you realize the content? Do you realize how explicit, how graphic this is? And I'm like, sure. While we were talking, Joseph Sulia beeped in. Steve switched over and Joseph said, hey, who's this Matt Rillhover? Have you considered him for the part? She so said, what, did he send you a message or something? And Joseph was like, no, 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 I, I just, you know, I, I saw his pictures and, um, he just, he, he really, he really has, has the look. And Steve's like, well, I'm on the phone with him right now. Steve says he, he casted me right away, but Steve would never give me the okay. I don't think he ever said yes, actually. He never said yes. He made me think that he had other options. When I told Joseph that I wanted to make this into a movie, part of my conditions were that he could not be here when we were filming and that I had to have total creative control over the entire script. I actually honored Steve Balderson's request that I not visit the set because I understood it. You know, Steve Balderson knew right from the very beginning that I have what is commonly known as a dominant personality. I may be soft-spoken, but I'm also very much a dominant person. And, and he knew correctly that I would try to hijack and tyrannize the entire production. Movies are different than novels, and this was going to be my interpretation. But I wanted to have the freedom to create something with a clear unity. And the only way to do that is to have one person holding the brush. Like in painting, you can have someone build the canvas, you can have someone mix the paints, but when it comes down to it, only one person can hold the brush. 
If two people hold the brush, it will look like it. And so I actually admired the fact that Steve Balderson excluded me from the production of the film. Um, I would have expected nothing less. There have been other filmmakers who have approached me um, with the desire to cinematically interpret my work. And I have rejected those proposals because Steve Balderson is the only director that I know of who is able to create films as if they were dreams. I mean, the only other filmmaker I know of, I should be fair and say, well, Jean Cocteau, Rainer Veda Fassbinder, Nicholas Rogue were able to do so as well. But his films are very oniric, they're very dreamlike, and uh, just potently optical. And so I knew that he was the right person for the job, and I had absolute confidence in him, absolute trust, absolute faith in him right from the very beginning. And I think that I would have tried to interfere with the creation of the film, and so I, I honor his decision. So you wonder what it's like to not be producing Watch Out. You know, it's really good, it's really fine. It, it tells me that, that my work is done or it's, it's well underway. Because I see my role, not just necessarily with, with my own children, adult children, but you know, with people that I come in contact with. My job is to teach, to, to train, to, to impart. It's not that I know all the answers, it's that I know lots of the questions. The challenge was what really attracted me to it. Um, I had no idea whether it was going to work, you know, using uh, a very small crew, doing it the way that I'd been talking about doing it for years, and this was sort of a good experiment to see if that would work. I'm still asking questions, but I'm asking different ones, and they're less hands-on, and it's more about wh what is his general marketing strategy. On paper, when, pe when someone's reading that, it sounds absolutely insane. And people kept calling me and saying, you've got to be out of your mind for doing this. I can't believe you're making this movie. What do you have? The flu. Oh my god. You were going to talk this far apart. OK, that's fine. I'm not going to get in. No, I am. Uh... She has a flu. What? She has the flu, so be careful. <laughs> My fever broke, so I'm not contagious anymore, but God, I feel like I've got pneumonia. So did you read the whole thing? Yes. Are you disturbed? Well, there's one thing I can't do. Hmm. I can't rub her thighs. Really? Yeah. It was really difficult to encourage people to participate in the project because it was so outrageous reading it. If you, if you just read the script and you didn't know how I was going to do it, I could imagine how horrifying and insane it would appear. We can also do pink. Oh, we can? Uh-huh. Oh, well. Oh, umbrellas. Here, hold you need this. them? I need to get one. So that the father can beat the girl with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> but casting the film was pretty interesting because what I did was I went back to a couple of the people that had, had wanted to work with me over the years and I'd contacted them and I said, okay, if you can basically pay your way out here, I will take care of you and put you up, but you got to get here and I can't pay you anything up front. I can only offer you a deferred payment, but would you do it? And they all said yes. I had to keep track of all of the actors in this movie because there's nobody to herd them. Every time I send an email, I write here what the email is for, and then I start color coordinating them. So I can tell that because this person and this person and this person have not responded to the email that I sent on Friday that I have to keep bothering them. But all these other people in blue have responded, and they're all set to go. Um, I also have all the extras their telephone numbers, how to reach them, um, credits, props that I still need to get. And here's the budget for the movie. Okay, I started with 16, and I'm just going down as I'm spending. And then when I reach zero, then I start spending my own money, and then uh, that's it. But it only takes one person to do this. You don't need 
18 producers and people to keep track of people. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. The only bad problem is, is that some, some of the actors will want to talk on the phone, but they don't realize that if I spent five minutes on the phone with all of them, it, I would be on the phone three hours every day. And so sometimes it's kind of irritating to get them to just use email instead of calling me all the time. And then I stained them with like food, like an old Lobster King menu. And I made a little like design, but then you have hats. And then there's a bunch of lobsters that we have like tissue lobsters that we're gonna like make. If you only have about 10 people that you're putting up at any given time, the costs of that are significantly less than if you're putting up 40 people or 50 people. Like on Firecracker, we had, you know, I don't know how many people on the crew, 30 or 40 people, and they each had to be fed and housed every day. And I knew that by, you know, only using three or four people on the Watch Out crew, that it was going to be considerably less expensive. And I knew that we could do it for next to nothing. Hi. 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 How Good are you? To, good to finally meet you. I know. You're so tall. Hey. Is this Kurt filming? Yes, Kurt. Yeah. Hi, Kurt. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, Isn't this weird? <laughs> yes. It's very, it's like a cave. I opened up the windows, I mean, just to get some fresh air in. Well, Guy is not staying here. Oh, okay. Because oh. Uh, Gaia's friend... Joseph is coming. That changes everything. Here and there, I'm right there. <laughs> oh, because you didn't want to share a room with Gaia, either of you. Well, no. Well, it's not yeah, that we're no. opposed to that, but it's I'm just, just saying, I mean. Right, now, I got it. For like, yeah. just, you know, hey, I don't know you. Let's <laughs> sleep together. I mean, I've done it. But. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> this is a photo book of my grandfather's photos that we had published. Aww. That is for you to take. Thank you. That is cool. I love when you go. I love small communities. I like the fact that you don't have to get in a car to necessarily go someplace. People are extremely friendly and helpful here, unlike most places where they, they promise that. It's a nice place. Not one of those places where you would say, oh, it's great, great place to visit, but I would never want to live there. I think it's sort of the opposite. Uh, that don't lie. Yeah, it's real. Should I bring some games over? Do you guys need some games? Like, games? Yeah, like Connect Four, Twister. <laughs> Riddle Hoover? Uh -huh. R I D D L E. Okay. It's either wines or all over here. My favorite alcoholic beverage? Whiskey. Well, we did a thing so that you guys can get 20% of this kind of thing. Oh, cool. Sure, yeah. Good too. It's fly swatter. No, it Which holds. I now just realized. Yeah, but this is so weird. It holds the fly swatter, Matthew. This it is holds. so strange to look. And pasties. Look, those little rose buds. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I wonder if like all of the rooms are this totally different. Oh my god. I have like a drag show in here. My name's Chase Orsini the Pretori and um I am script supervisor. I'm um, a junior at the Savannah College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. The things they teach you in film school freak me out a little bit. And what I would expect when I go on a film set is not what I got when I came here. It's worth it. It's worth it. And the hell with all the oh. crazy fan mail, so-called fan mail. The letters get saying, You've sinned, Judy. Turn to Christ. I go to church every Sunday. I've got God in my heart. That's more than most of you can say. My children have it. Mark Heron has it. And we present an army. <laughs> we represent strength and goodness. And by God, justice had better prevail. <laughs> Although I doubt it. <laughs> Being Judy Garland is quite a chore. 
Not only for me, but for Mark, for Joe, for Lorna, and Liza. But it's not too much of a chore for Sid Luft. Perineum. Oh, my favorite. Pry ape puss. <laughs> What does that mean? What's that for? These are how uh, I mean, Joseph broke down the words for me. Because no one fucking talks like that, except Jonathan Burroughs. Pry an ape's puss. What is the word? Pry a puss. <laughs> Where is it used? I don't remember. Should I be wearing this when I have the dark on? <laughs> Maybe. What? Okay. Like... <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, let's just keep all this stuff together. Well, I'm gonna put it in piles. Okay. What pants do you wear with Chase can take pictures of the piles, and then I can... You want to? Yeah. I have these. Yes. I have these. <laughs> and then he takes, takes a picture. That is cute. It's a little outfit. Well, that's college Jonathan outfit. So what, what do I wear for that? Um... This. I thought both Hubba and Yaza were because I was orgasming. No, Hubba Hubba Hubba's not. Hubba 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 is dancing. You're like, oh, 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 my God, that changes everything. That's yeah. great. Okay. Ooh, what underwear can I, ooh, ooh, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear this underwear then. Okay. For hubba, hubba, hubba. For with this. Okay. Okay. Can you take another separate picture of this? Just so I know. Right, and then if you're just solid black outfit, that's actually really scary. It's just this angle, because it looks like the eyes are looking at you. Like, wherever you turn, it looks like he's totally staring at you. Oh, my God. Chase, did you get this one? Yes. Okay. What time do you need to be up for? Same. Did you really look at the schedule though to see how easy it was? Yes. After I read the schedule, I was just like, wow, this is gonna be great. <laughs> like we didn't even start shooting until like noon. What I'm gonna have you do is put your legs up on the outside. I can hold this, I can hold this hand up, so. Like that? City Market, which is a gourmet food store that also teaches cooking classes. And where you're sitting is where we teach the cooking classes. And the people that come, they eat, and we cook. Kind of like this, only we'd have told you what we fixed for you and how we fixed it. Another thing that we did during the shoot, which I really, really loved, was um, special food. And when you have such a small crew, you can afford to do different types of things with your catering or your Whatever. We did not have craft service set up at all. People were expected to bring their own snacks and their own water if they wanted them. And they knew this going into it, um, that it was going to be different. You didn't eat all your sandwich, Kurt. I didn't either. And there's Dolce de Leche, which is a milk caramel cream. Sure. We got some of that, and then a ganache on top of that. I'm good too, actually. I'm Kimmy Red, and I'm excited because I got pooped on by a bird this morning, and that's good luck. <laughs> but I think the one thing that was really nice that I saw on this set, um, is that you don't necessarily have to have a large crew to get a lot of really, really good shit done. You just kind of have to have a, a few core people that know what they're doing and uh, are really passionate about it. You know, this whole thing seems to be a labor of love for pretty much everyone involved. Nice to meet you. You guys not filming today? No, we are. Like right now, we just had lunch next door and then we're going back. Oh, Aren't that right? And she's coming after her with the iron. It's so You're going with pot. Right now! <laughs> <laughs> this is when you need my whistle. Yeah, yeah. This is when I need my whistle. You're gonna stay with Clark. Right, and right. And he's gonna give you a car. And okay. then you're gonna drive yourself to the give simmer. Give me a car. So you'll want to get directions from I'm gonna get rid of my shoes. So okay. Gotta get to the simmer. Okay. Do y'all need any help with anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the refrigerator Who needs to buy new things when you can fix them yourself? Hell, it was just bought. 
it's news. Oh, really? Jimmy, where are you from? I'm from Huntington Beach, California. Oh, I heard you talking about that one. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> okay, so you're the primary driver for the at least the next two weeks. Yeah, Steve told me I was friendlier than a lot of the people, so he said I should be the driver, <laughs> and I was like, all right. Well, I mean, I think it's just a couple times. Yeah, for sure, you know, and but I... But what I'm going to do is I'm going to entrust you with the vehicles, period. Okay. This very car that you're going to use when you're not using the truck, we used in Firecracker. It was my dad's car. We had one of the crew members, I, I had said you guys can use it. One of the crew members was a gal from California who knew nothing about gravel roads <laughs> and is driving along the gravel road at about 50 miles an hour. Right, and I assume stopping she, is and, not... And she wrecked it, wrecked the car. Uh, you know, lost control, plowed off the side into a tree. That's the only thing is just if, if, if you're not familiar with gravel roads and we get on some gravel roads, um, go slow. Uh, I mean, do I, I don't need to tell you how to drive this truck, do I? Um, well, I've never driven a truck before. Ah. Uh. I mean, it's just, and you'll want to scoot the seat forward, probably. Okay. Let's see. But, I mean, you're just, you're way up. Okay. And you got, it, so there's a lot more vehicle in front of you and behind you than you think. Okay. The actual driving of the truck. I don't think he has any idea what he's done. So, let's just hope I don't murder the entire cast and or crew. All right. Ah, this isn't so bad. Piece of cake. Okay. Uh, my mom actually wouldn't talk to me for a couple days after she found out what the, what the film was about, so that was, um, that was pretty fun too. I don't know if they're gonna film this all the way through, and then I know they're putting a cut in right here, I'll ask them about that. But scene B basically goes up until, so you guys are going to have to go from the beginning of this scene basically until you start fondling and kissing each other. Okay. T. Matthew, I need you to stand right in front of this blue bag. <laughs> no, my boobs get touched on a regular basis, so. Oh, as soon as I get them. Yeah. My name's Buttermilk. Right. <laughs> you gotta get the Minnesota thing going here. <laughs> I gotta get it, get the pumps primed. Right here, right? That's okay. We're doing one and two, okay. four and three. Excellent. This one has the sound. Hi. I mean, we only had a crew of maybe ten people, and we were able to get accomplished what people in Hollywood can get accomplished with a crew of fifty people. And I think that's completely admirable of Steve to be able to do that and do it successfully. Okay, cut. From just about halfway. <laughs> On action, you smack the glove. Right, and then you start reading to me? Okay. Right now? Oh, right now? Just read it to us. He stank like a dead lobster that had been left out in the air for too long. He shoved his hand under my skirt and started to play with my asshole, and then he said... Okay, it's about eight seconds. So Wes, you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna go back to your seat. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, ready? Action. We're done for today! Like those? They're just taped what? down. You were supposed to fuck me. I'm confused. What, for what? What scene? The scene. Like, I was cast in her role. You're gonna uh, you are so false. No, I'm not. Make it no, seriously, because he fun. changed it because he Chase, wanted to be too... Chase, what's your email address? Yeah, Chase, what's your email address? No way. No. No, I'm not false. No, he wanted to be too... Oh, I have it. He wanted to be two gay guys. <laughs> you know, the, 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 there's oh. a male babysitter. See, I would have... I wouldn't have I'm been totally as interested kidding. in Bobby if that were the case, though. <laughs> I like the whole, like... I'm kidding. I know you're kidding. I told you to throw <laughs> shit. I said that. Uh. Amazingly, you look really hot while you're doing that. <laughs> uh. What happened was we were at Sonic. 
what time is it? It was 11. I don't know what day it was, I'm sorry. And I wanted to put down the window because I wanted to press the red button to order. But, uh, no, but of course, you but know, not knowing, the driver didn't forewarn me that the window was broken. So what did I do? I press the button and it falls down. It's all my fault. <laughs> Matt hates me, but it's okay, I'll live. Oh, you, you gotta mix the ev mix the Everclear and the little line Wait. thing. Yeah, for Everclear you need what? a little more than a splash. Yeah, you mix it into stuff. that. Oh, yeah. I am not drinking that. Throw there is no way I'm drinking that. You're fine. Cheers. That I can't do it. Like, what? You know what? No, honestly, there's like this <laughs> much in here, nasty. and the rest is ginger ale. Okay. Nasty. All right. To Steve Balderson. To Steve Balderson. Oh, oh come on. Your heart. Yeah. Everclear is nasty. It's deadly. Did what you are you doing in table? here? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! At three o'clock, I'm gonna break you. There are two types of filmmakers. The kind who want to appeal to other filmmakers, and the kind that want to think about their end result. That's one of the hardest decisions you have to make in your, in your own spirit, is what type of filmmaker are you? Do you really have to be photographed next to a very large Aeriflex with a hundred people behind you looking up to you like you're the director and then you're standing tall in front of this very large crane? If that's what it, you think is the definition of what makes a filmmaker, great. But there is another type of filmmaker and I fall into the second category because I don't particularly care what other filmmakers think of me or what the movie executives think of me. They're not my target market. People who buy my movies aren't reading The Hollywood Reporter. If I spend months and months trying to get the people at Hollywood Reporter to do a story on me, it's a waste of time because at the end of the day, the people who read that aren't going to have an impact in what I'm doing. And so I challenge all filmmakers out there to decide what type of filmmaker are they. Well, maybe we lost that regulator. Our train shot. Oh. No, this one. All right. With the red. Everything sounds like a production company to me these days. Okay. It's like heaping tablespoon productions. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the beard is great. <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Two months worth. Are you tired of it? Oh, uh, well, my love life has been scant. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Sorry, that's all right. <laughs> I almost played a mermaid in a movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? A merman. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I really, really wanted to, but they cast a porn star instead. It's PBR in there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. Betty, right? That's the name? Miriam. Oh, in real life? No, the I character. There's a German town. Ask Matt what he thinks. Matthew? Yeah. One. <laughs> Matt, one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we don't know how to say B-E-A-T-E. -E. My wife's character's name. He I thinks thought, it's Betty. I thought it was Betty. 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 I think it is. Should I call Joseph? <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> this is Riddle Hoover. Are you Um. Yeah. We will. We will be filming some today. Um. We had a question for you. Um. Brian's wife. Um. How do you say her name? Beata. Beata. Okay. Bay. Ah, T, Beata, Beata, Peter, Joseph. I 
Oh, well, I'm... Oh, right on. Oh, well, thank you. It's a, it's a tremendous pleasure to be involved. So how do you say your wife's name? So, so, tell, so tell me again how my wife's name is pronounced? Her name is pronounced Beata. 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 <laughs> I said it was like, that was perfect. <laughs> Great. All right. We picked this out for Lobster King with Ham, Prim Lager, Puke, and Dr. Mendoza. But I didn't know if I had, if I was wearing a coat with that. I forgot. Or did it? Not know. We'll need to have Chase's camera. He deleted this picture. Why? You need this space. Why didn't he just download the one the computer? I don't know. Hi. Is it true, fine, is it true that you deleted the pictures for the continuity for costumes? Well, we had a question today about one of the costumes and we can't remember, so we would need those pictures. In the future, when I have you take continuity photographs, will you keep them or download them on your computer so that we can know? So you deleted them. A lot of people think, you know, being an asshole as a director means um, you're going to get a good performance out of people, but um, the thing I'm seeing here is, you know, he's just really nice to everyone, even when people are doing things that are probably pissing him off real bad, he's real good about keeping his cool and um, keeping everything light and fun, so, I mean, everyone's having a ball on set, we've all really uh, fallen madly in love with each other, the entire cast and crew. I guess I'll play the werewolf song. No, we gotta go the whole way. Are you gonna chew it? Yeah. I'll take one. Here, give me one. Okay. Here, we got half of it. It's making my eyes water already. Matt. Okay. Matt, do you want to do this? Are you us? Are you joining us? Okay. Well, McQueen, you want to do some garlic with me? Yeah, we're Cheers. all gonna do some garlic. Cheers. Should all we right. chase it with wine? Cheers. We Cheers. should. All right. Cheers. Are we ready? One, two, three. Ooh. <laughs> oh damn. Oh god. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt from getting sick, because that would suck. Holy crap, it's so hot. I know. Oh my god. We're never gonna get this out of our breath, you know? <sighs> Tastes like burning. It really does. <sighs> oh my god. Matt. <sighs> See, I, it doesn't bother me. <sighs> oh god. <laughs> oh, stop, stop, stop. <sighs> My nose is a little stuffy, it doesn't bother me. Let me smell yeah. yours. Oh, take that. Oh, oh man, like you guys. the best thing you've ever seen. We can only kiss each other tonight. The kids and me. The advisor is ill. So no one talk to him. <laughs> Don't go near him. Have nothing to do with him. He's on vitamin C and airborne, and we all should be do when he's here. <laughs> Mr. Limpy. Oh, that's a weird feeling. I know. It's so weird. Have you not touched it yet? No. Yeah, no, it's really weird. Have you been hit with it yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Mr. Limpy. And what is that used for, like, besides, like, as a prop? I mean... I think this is actually for... I don't know what it's called, what they do with it, but they put it in their pants, lesbians, like, in Boys Don't Cry, and then she's more of a man. <laughs> yeah. So, and then they switch to the rigid one for... Like, right. <laughs> And you know this. <laughs> you know this no, because I'm like that would be no good. Like they'd have to switch to. <laughs> um, yeah, Kurt, can you do it? Yeah. This is the life of an assistant director. Yes. <laughs> Putting it's makeup on. Wow, her that looks really real now. I mean, look at all the like the wrinkles in the skin and stuff. <laughs> Straight on, it's like whoa. <laughs> Today is the scene where we're going to be shooting a blank, the gun. I want to go outside and test it, just to see what it does. And then we're going to shoot it maybe once or twice in about an hour. All right, thank you. Let me know when you have called them, and then we'll do it. 
It cannot fire and cannot be converted to real ammo. Blank firing guns are not toys, Chance. Chance. <laughs> Chase, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing of note for something that has a cap on it like that, yeah. the actual um, exhaust of the gunpowder will be coming out probably sideways. Probably one of the sides. Yeah. Would... But I pictured you just with one hand out. Yeah. My dad has called the police and they said give him three minutes so he's going to call dispatch and tell them that we're firing the gun so the dispatch will know. <laughs> Ready? Where's the cat? <laughs> oh my god! Now, did you, did I you don't think you tried to shoot the cat! <laughs> <laughs> now, you sort of held on to his thumb, right? Yeah. Cock it back in the cat. Yeah, don't. Now, now take it. There you go. Okay, I know. You could totally plan a murder here in this town and get away with it. Mm -hmm. Like, we could have just. Like if there were someone. two or three people that were planning to kill someone, and we called the police and said, oh, we're just shooting a movie. <laughs> we'll, you know, we're gonna be firing some shots. Right. Sometime in the next hour or so, you have plenty of time to get them into your car and take off because nobody's coming to check to see. In this scene, you know, I've, I've given this guy an elephant dart. You know, he's paralyzed on the floor, but fully oh, aware God. of what's going on. And I, you know, open up, take down his pants, cut it off, and then I have to feed it to him. Yeah. Well, his teeth are clenched the entire time. Yet he manages to open up his mouth to spit out the applesauce, but then they go right back. And I'm like, okay, how are we supposed to get this dick in your mouth with your teeth not unclenching? Doesn't do it. do it. Anne has the nerve to say to me in between takes, are your hands clean? Your fingers touching my lip. I'm like, we're making a movie here. <laughs> Casting call for this is pretty clear. You have to you know, be okay with doing certain things to be in this movie. Won't let the, the fake dick with the fake blood on it enter his mouth, which is part of the scene, and is freaked out because my fingers are touching his lips. And it's and, like... And he read this material before he agreed to do of it? Of course! Oh yeah, and he was sick. Yeah, and he was the one that had 101 temperature the night before, so I think I was the one that had, that should have had any reservations about touching him. <laughs> Apparently like, it ended up looking great, but like... Just, I mean, you know, because I, I had to drive people on that day to and from the airport. But, you know, I got in, you know, I'm sitting down, and the whole time he was just very disagreeable about everything. Well, method, like, I don't even know what that means. I mean... It's bullshit. I think it's an I excuse. I mean, I do. I know what it means, but... I think it's an excuse. You know what I mean? I mean, you're an actor. Actings make believe. You know what I mean? Is. You just put it on for however long. Action and cut. Rosanna, 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 Rosanna. Got the overhead. Let's get some mood lighting. <laughs> well, what's that one right there? Right. Okay. Should try. Just park. Do it. All right. Come on. Cause we like to watch. I don't know. Hey, Matt. I think this is her. That's got to be her. Matt. What? She's, She's here. here. Okay. Hi. Hooray! Hi. I'm being filmed already. Yeah. Hey. Yes. We Hi. Hi. Good. Good. I recognize you First immediately. Man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. It's nice. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey, Ju. Hi, I'm Hi. Ty. Hi, Ty. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So this is awesome. Yeah. You want to see sweet? Yeah. It's beautiful. You're one of the lucky ones. You get yeah, you get it by yourself. Wow. Look at me. Okay. <laughs> one more thing to get out of my oh. uh, car. You want some help? No, it's just one box. I'm good. Okay. Props. You have to bring your own props? Yeah, see what Steve does? You have to bring your own props. But, and I act in some of my films, but um, mainly I'm a film, like a writer director. I did the easy part. Okay. Part. <sighs> Always have to wear the pants in this film crew. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I bet you're having a ball with this um, script. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's unlike anything I've ever done. Yeah, it's... I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, Did you get to meet the writer? I mean, is he around here? I haven't met him? him. No, he's in Chicago. He's a college okay. professor. I don't know, I think Steve just wanted to keep his interpretation separate from, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, something just happened with the, the microphone. <laughs> um, is that the one in there? Well, I pressed three minutes and then I pressed 100% and then it went boom. <laughs> <laughs> and now there is no longer any power in the microwave. Uh oh, <laughs> shit. Um, did the plug Maybe come out or something? Maybe reboot it? Like, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> unplug it, it off, turn it plug it back in? I don't know. Oh no, did it die? It might have just blown a fuse, but it seemed like something else would have gone on. Right, All but like, I feel like over here, I wonder if, um... <gasps> mm. Oh shit. Oh fuck! Well, no! Uh, yeah, we should have... Natalie Gourmets! Yeah, I think a fuse went out because there's a portion of our room that has no light and the other portion does. Um, but the side that has no light is the side with um, our refrigerator. What about the popsicles? Right? Maybe we should just, just eat them, eat all them now. Eat them now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all out of red. All out of blue, aren't we? Oh my god. Okay, so Can what do you want? Them? What do you want? A purple one. You can have a yellow one if you want, but I don't recommend it. Okay. <laughs> Steve makes making a movie a tremendous amount of fun. The schedule's been light, so days are short. Let's say on the average day we start around 10, break for lunch around noon, get back to work at 1, and are finished by 5. Not many sets, even independent film sets, are like that. I'm a burlesque dancer, and I was um, performing at the Sensuous Woman Show with Margaret Cho. And then I saw the casting call go out, and, and I said, I want a role, I want to be in this. And he's like, you have to come to Kansas, and I said, I don't care, that sounds awesome. My first time with a script and movie cameras, so... Um, so, Steve popped your film cherry. He did, he totally popped my film cherry. chef from San Francisco who uh, was a fan and he wanted to cook for us for a week and it was amazing because we're, we're like it, it was just too good to be true <laughs> like if you go see that now you're like what the heck how does he he transforms everything like his whole body becomes like <coughs> he's just unbelievable by the way your kitchen is amazing well <laughs> no it is I had a blast here for two hours it was awesome and it was too good to be true, because he was only here for a couple of days and then he left town, um, sort of unexpectedly. If you're going to commit to something like this, you need to commit. If you're going to say that you're going to come in for a week and cook food, <laughs> on the second day, you don't need to send a text message to, to the director, a cryptic text message saying that you have to leave town for whatever reason and just leave without any other explanation. What, what happened with Joe? He's flaked out. He flaked out? Yeah, did you not hear? No, what happened? Joe flaked out. I don't know what he's doing. He's not cooking today for us, and I think he's leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Woody Allen said 80% of success is showing up, and it's the truth. Oh, and then Joe, the cook, has flaked out on us. Mm, no. Oh, wait, he wait, he's flaked out. out. He's like, either leaving today or tomorrow, but if he's still here until tomorrow, he's going to sit by himself at the Super 8, like he's not coming over. 
for people that walk around making excuses their entire lives for why this didn't happen or that didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. Nothing's ever going to happen. <laughs> because they get stuck in that rut. Aquarius. Oh, I forgot the Not window sure. was open. I'm sure that the whole simmer heard that lovely serenade. <laughs> Do you want to ride in my beautiful balloon? I had a mullet too when I was 13. I have a mullet on my twat. You should see my anus. I got bangs. <laughs> I do. I got bangs on my anus. I got goddamn bangs on my goddamn anus. They have their suitcases. I got some nice bangs on my pucker. My sweet button. All kinds of faggotries going on in here. You want to touch my button? <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Honey! Don't go to the bathroom, I want you to touch oh, my button! We all miss you so much. We certainly should. What? We do. We were just sitting here thinking how much we'd like you to be here uh, right now. I like you. Do Good what? Frankie. It's not going to happen. Are you going to hang out with us at all before I leave? Steve, we love you. Why aren't you hanging out? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Can't wait. That's a shot. One, two, three. See, you know, that's the thing. I'm not good with the hard liquor. That's why I take my shot, and then I'm good. You don't have to do it. All right, see? You know, I don't give into peer pressure. My little made him do it because he's from Tennessee. I live in Tennessee. I'm not from Tennessee. He's from Bermuda. Where? Bermuda. <laughs> Tell me again. Bermuda. <laughs> Where's that? Over by that triangle that everyone disappears in. Are you kidding? You're not Southern. I don't like him anymore. Mm-mm. You had my liquor. It's all a facade. I thought you were a southern. Go to hell. <laughs> Geographically, it's southern. I'm from Arkansas. Oh. Really? So is my grandmother. She's Arkansas Dynasty. And I'm related to members of Leonard Skinner. I found that out recently. There's something to project into public. Okay, now before we all come in here and throw things around, let's try to keep everything out of the room. Okay. So come in and help us dress. We're going to dress the set. Yeah, we need the blow-up doll on the bed, or upside down, or something, or on the floor. We don't have to put a picture of it. There. Oh. Do you want to do it? Just get up here and move some stuff around because then it'll, you'll remember having done it when you're talking to the phone. Well, yes, Mr. Motivation, I should. <laughs> Rearrange some things, move some things, some stuff that looks like it's not quite right. This looks very staged. Just closing yeah. these. Yes. I'll just take them out. <laughs> Here, pull that tape out of there. Yeah. Just like. Let's get you out. We're gonna do sound on the TV in a minute. Okay. You want the light up there? <laughs> this is Amy. How is that a guy is here? Hi. Amy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I'm Brian. Hi, nice guys. But I'll go, you have to go to the bathroom. Then we'll go back and forth. Oh, yeah. I need my. Because I gotta put. I gotta meditate. I gotta do the lines by myself. Do you have? Everybody's been doing it all I the way through. I have to masturbate. <laughs> I don't want to do Everybody's, you. everybody's doing all their lines all the way through. What? In one take. <laughs> they are. Uh huh. Okay. Huge. Nice to you. Thank you. Thank you. Great meeting you. Great working with Are you. you. Taking it off now? All right, honey. So for sure, there's one. I have a little. Um, I'll find you on MySpace. Well, okay. Okay. I would have had to wait there too. Okay. Next week, you can help me come here up there safely. Okay. One down, four to go. Really quick. You know, the stuff with the Polaroid, stuff with the doll. What kind of takes? So you really are doing takes. All the way through, like you're trying well, yeah, to for dialogue we have been doing, but for shots like that's that, that's intimidating. Steve's been really happy with like one or two takes of things. Really? So like with the Polaroid things, I think I would just snap the picture at the Polaroid and he'd be like, okay, next pose. So a lot of those I only... But he's getting coverage on them. Is he well, for some of those, I think they're more montage things. 
there are other things like the love doll scene where there's plenty of coverage. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get a little peek of that scene. <laughs> I met Steve at CalArts, and we were in poetry class together. <laughs> and then we would go have lunches, power lunches, and talk about our future and what we were going to do, and how he was going to make movies, and how I was going to act in them. And that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> well, I'll be back in a bit. It's only 3.20. Oh, oh, okay. What kind of alcohol do you want? We'll buy you some. I like whiskey. Whiskey it is. It's like, you can do this feasibly and call it film camp. Get a person to like bring a script or I mean no, you I can know. do this all the time. Every you get summer. people to work for free, you no, get you people get... to come out and learn and they come, they send them here, you make a fucking great movie. And they learn and they Yeah. You know, uh -huh. They learn and, and we could do Wilbert that way. I know. My cleavage is gonna do most of the lines. Right. If that's okay. Very anal hair. I'm very anal hair. I've done my anal hair red, white, and blue. So gross. I try, it's not possible. But this is pretty fun, cool. This is actually more my style. Isn't it great? I look fucking badass, yeah, I look at it. I'm just afraid my hair is going to catch on fire tomorrow. No lighters or anything around it. Seems like a ridiculous idea. Yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. But when you feel good, it's going to be big. My hair is like Angela Davis meets Dolly Parton. It's going to be big. But when you feel good, it's going to be big. 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 Queen Latifah, maybe. You'll see. I'm excited. You will be. <laughs> but if I see it and I'm disappointed, somebody's going to be I don't think you'll be now. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Such a diva. Steve's uh, carrying her luggage for her. Oh, she looks. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Better now. How are you? Holy Hi, shit. Hi, baby. How are you doing? Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, oh, see that bus over there? He realized me. I mean, men just throw themselves at me and you can see why. <laughs> I can see you like me too. From Paps Blue Ribbon to this. <laughs> oh, I need a Paps. Yeah, right? I was going to say that goes that right kidding. along with it. Let me get you one to hold. Oh, no. You'll love it. No, no, right? Don't open it. Well, maybe you should. I'm not going to open it. Well, no, I should probably drink one. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, can you please get a picture? Well, he used to cast me as a normal person. And then somewhere along the way, I had beehives and wigs, and I was psychotic, or I got shot or killed. Um, but this one, I don't know, this one seemed like most challenging. <laughs> Because I have three pages of straight talking, just like right now, like just babbling. But it had to be pulled off. Like you can't just say lines and be, you know, captivate an audience if you're, you know, not committed to it. So this was the most challenging, I think. Kurt, have you set up camera? Yep. Okay. Chris, you want to help him? Yep. Just do that daily checklist thing. All right. Were you here for the daily checklist yep. last time? Okay. We got to get it today. We got to make sure we get. It. So this is everything that you need to make a movie in one trunk? Yes. It fits in Several this. duffel bags. Trunk. Detail level zero, 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 zero. Negative one, negative three. Uh, news gam is off. Cine D, Cine like B. Uh, auto, Cine like off. Thin, blank, blank. SW mode is 6 dB, 12 dB, off. We went through months and months of research to do, um, to find out what settings are the exact settings that we need to make this look exactly like film. And then I made a checklist so that every morning when we turn the camera on, they can literally just go down the list and make sure all those settings are the same. Very cool. So you're not in film looking post. It's all in. It already, already does. Wow, yeah. Right here. I just got off a movie set um, for a kids movie and it had a huge crew. The way that that movie was made and the way that this one are completely different, the way that this one's made. It's, I think people are going to find it appalling that Steve is going to make such a great movie for a tiny budget and minimal um, crew. Like I think that people are just going to go, oh, they're just going to flip out, it's going to make people pissed because they do have to spend a lot of money and they do have to sometimes waste a lot of time and not get, you know, the result that 
they had anticipated, where Steve knows what he wants. He has a small crew, people that are pretty much volunteered to be out here. And whereas other movie sets, big movie sets in LA, you know, you have so many people, you know, working on the movie and sometimes, uh, you know, people don't get utilized as much as they would on a film like this. And I think it's gonna be incredible, but it's also, I think, gonna make some people mad <laughs> uh, that he's done it and done it well for like 10 bucks, because I think that's what the budget is. <laughs> Here, can you do that? I don't remember everyone's name. Oh, well, two with the, well, just do this. <laughs> is it empty? Oh, Brody, what's in that? Oh, someone's got it. Someone's semen is in that. What's going on? Who put that there? Ooh. Robert, do you want some champagne? We're having a for making production YouTube goal. within a production. Yeah. As... You know, we're doing, we're filming Watch Out here, but we got jealous and wanted to make some short films of our own. And the first one we're doing call, is called Everybody Sharts, and the other one is called um, I Will Never, Tim, Timmy Red Will Never Eat a Vagina. Film oh, cap, we're gonna do this all the time. All right. To make movies like this. I, think it's, I really think it's a genius idea. Pay your own way and make No, no, a pay, movie. pay your, well, you get people to pay their own way for the most part, and then you get scripts every year. Or we do you do like every six or, or nine months and, and you do uh, make a film. I'm down with it. And it's even if you're not SAG, there should be a way you should be able to do it because it's like a project. Uh-uh. Well, here's what we're going to do first. Okay. I, we're going to make the recipe for your... Oh, okay. And I just wanted to make sure you could have it, Vomit. because it's all okay. fresh food stuff. Cottage okay. cheese. I can do that. Kool-Aid. <laughs> um, what else were you thinking? Applesauce. Okay, I could do that. Do you want glazed or powdered? Mmm... Glazed. Okay. <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a long time. Once I just tried to see myself as the character and just kind of settled down, we didn't even realize it was just a small group of us in there. I love doing this. I love doing this. I quit my job that I was doing for 10 years about a year ago, and I was really afraid I wouldn't find projects to do, but um, it just kind of jumped off the cliff and, and just been working ever since, so I'm just... I'm free. I'm having the best time. Ooh, shika boom, shika boom boom. Mm. Shika boom, shika boom boom. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's good. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Kind of took baby steps and walked me through it. All I had to do was sit back and listen and do what I was told to do. And so it just went, it was way cool. I, I can't wait to see it. It was, it was nice. <clears throat> Lean your face in towards me. I tell them that I probably can't show my parents, whereas other movies I could show my parents. But Firecracker was pushing it. Like, I was like, come to the movie, and then worried what they would think. I mean, my grandparents came to the movie, too, and I was worried about Firecracker. But this one, I'm just going to have to kind of probably show them clips of it and say, this is it. This is what I did in the movie. And then maybe not show them the rest. I just, it's, I think it's a pretty intense movie, but I think by far it'll be a great, great film and, and something that's going to definitely put Steve further on the map of genius. Hey! Hi! Hi, Julian. How you doing? I know they just did a photo shoot. Looks hot. Yeah, how are you? Hi. That's Matt. Matt? Yes. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. How are you? Good. How's your trip? Not bad, yeah. not bad. I'm a little tired. Yeah, the flight good. It was good, oh. yeah. The flight was great. The drive is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. 
No. Did, was it raining the whole way, or was it just like no, the last part? No, no. It so Isn't it Passover? It is. I know. I know. Am I just yelling? My mother like isn't even talking to me right now for various reasons. But uh, I was like, she's gonna be. I'm just gonna call her and tell her what I'm doing on Passover. She'll be so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> that wig is really good. It's like Annie. Did you Jesus. do the whole like page monologue, or did you did you improvise it? Did you? No, I did all. You did all pages. three pages? Yeah, yesterday. So I can sing on my toes. Oh, I know. Oh, wow! Look at that. And the toes. She's fancy. Got to go. The toes I, got to go. The toes are going tomorrow. Every time I think about it, I ski really hard on my toes, and I've been feeling like my toes are so precious to me mm -hmm. lately. <laughs> so, yeah. some, of the, <laughs> some of the stuff I'm not, I wasn't sure if it was Brittany or Hooker. Brittany, Hooker. Because it's such a surprise. You know, it is. One of the reasons that I really wanted to work with Steve, uh, when I heard about what he's doing out here and, and when I saw the movies that he's making is I think he's one of the only artists right now who is working outside of the Hollywood system entirely, genuinely. There's a lot of people who pretend, like I, I just read something where there was this line like, oh, there are no indie films anymore. And that's not true with Steve. I mean, this is a, this is a community of artists making the movies they want to make, and he is really going to be a very important person historically when we look back on this uh, on this time in film. This might be atrocious. I can't tell. Uh oh, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> atrocious in like a really artistic way, though. <laughs> He's so fast. He works so fast. It really surprised me. And uh, like he just throws you right in there and it's like, okay, your foot's here and your arm's here. You're lying like this and there's some throw up on your face and action. And <laughs> I was like, wait, uh, uh, okay, you know? <laughs> I think he has a lot of, um, a lot of respect for actors, and he has a lot of fun with them. And once I caught on, after the first couple takes, once I got it, that you just have to, like, jump in full force, uh, I found it really liberating, really exciting. Cock that leg up there, girl. <laughs> How much is it gonna cost me getting this movie? Oh shit, there's oh. wax on the table. It's okay, leave the wax on the table. There's shit, there's wax on the table! It burned my head off almost. <laughs> I was like a Michael Jackson. Holy <laughs> fuck, I just look over and there's just like this illumination. <laughs> Julie, how that happened? My shorts uh, on fire! What could on fire, Julian? This. <laughs> oh my the God. lovely castles at the end. Now you are not gonna be able to bite that off. That's some plastic I shit. Made it. Hey. Nice. What, what happened? He'll eat that, but he won't eat a vagina. What just happened? <laughs> I bit off so the burn on her. Um, you guys, that was so weird. All of a sudden, someone went up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> that was so wow. if, I mean, I'm a little tipsy. I'm no <laughs> Oh, shit. Is this one of the costumes? At least it's not one of the costumes. Okay. Right. I will never. Good Matt being a good boy. 
We have a lot to do tomorrow. A lot to do tomorrow. What are you doing? Shaving my body. <laughs> Look what Amy left. All that by herself. I don't want to go back to real life. Like, we're in Oz. That's what this is. Exactly. You know what this, I mean? I don't this wanna, place, I don't everything on. I don't together. I don't want to go back home. They're done! Yay! <laughs> it's been a wild ride. Steve's a great guy. I look forward to seeing the finished product. That's this one. Yes, okay. now you got it. <laughs> are you guys doing a doc documentary, or what are you doing? Yeah, we're following, he's an actor, so we're just following him around. So what do you... We're shooting a film. We, I don't recognize you, so... We just finished filming a movie here, so... Okay, and there's a documentary. It's called Watch Out. It's, Watch based, out? it's based on a book. On a book? What's the book about? A guy that falls in love with himself. Independent? Mm -hmm. Watch out? Yeah. Well, I'll watch out for it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It took me just a couple of weeks to edit the film. Um, and then when I was finished with the edit, and I did the sound, and we had Rob Kleiner score the film, I had a test screening. Editing is manipulating. Editing is rewriting and recreating what you already have. When this movie is finished in October, I wanted to coordinate a premiere screening at a film festival and be able to simultaneously have DVDs when people walk out of the cinema because uh, had we had DVDs on hand when Firecracker was in theaters, uh, we would have sold twice as many. We would have made twice as much money. A film festival is the easiest way, so we don't have to like rent the theater ourselves. Film festivals close their deadlines for submissions months before their festival date. So at the beginning of June, I had to get a screener to several film festivals even though that their festivals were not happening until October. Of course, in June, we were not finished with the movie. Thirty? That's exciting. Can somebody take the post office today? <laughs> I'm just working in the postal room. Mail room. This we're sending to Amazon. <laughs> this is where I do my editing. Right here on this table. So I have my aircracker over here. And it's going to England, so it has to have one of these. And then, when we have finished our orders, we put them in this big box of other orders. These are all the orders that we've had recently. This is why you should self-distribute your own movies. I just uh, thought it was wild how fast Steve got this all rolling. It was just really cool. I'd actually never had anyone say, hey, I got this script, can you read it? And then call me and say, hey, we're starting in like three weeks. It was amazing. So. That was really neat, and I'm just really impressed. I can't wait to see it. I think it's gonna be cool. I had a test screening for a couple of people, different times, and I had them fill out a test questionnaire, sort of to let me know what their favorite moment was, what their least favorite moment was, etc. And what I found when we did Firecracker, and, and I did the same sort of result, uh, the same sort of test screening, the results said, everyone will like each thing once, and everyone will hate at least one thing once, which basically cancels each other out. And it says that you're never gonna please everybody. There will always be a percentage of people who hate you and hate what you're doing. So you cannot focus on those people and you can't be bothered by people who don't get what you're doing. So please just remember that when you're setting out to release your film into the world, you cannot control what happens. You will get every um, reaction known to man. I thought it was
was good. I feel like after the movie ends, you have that one moment of whoa. It's like you just you're you're just kind of in shock for us. Not even shock. It's almost like the movie moves at such a pace, and the characters' dialogue. It kind of is almost hypnotic, and and then it's just over, and you're like, wait, 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 wait a second. You know, you want to keep going. Mr. Rudolph Hoover, this is the FBI. <laughs> We have a sex tape we confiscated. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pass the phone around. Here's Shelly, Miss Gretchen. I'm fine. Your butt looked really good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be creepy, but you seem so natural in that character. <laughs> <laughs> um, the part about the female genitalia, I really hated you at that part, so... I'm just gonna yeah. sit there, because it's gonna take a second to sink in of what they just saw. Just because there's so much coming at you so fast. And I love movies like that because that's the kind that you stand around and you say, did you see it yet? Yeah, and there's conversation going back. Especially in the last 15 minutes. I mean, that's a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that's how it ends. You're just like, what just happened in the last 20 minutes of this whole thing? <laughs> I'm a cynic. Um, you ask the average audience, right? I work with undergrads, um, and they're not going to get it. They're going to get the porn. They're going to get you know, the, the crass humor and blah, 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 and that's what they're going to focus on. Like, I don't think it's that shocking. Like, there's people that will go to the gym, you know, like every night for like three hours and just like stare at themselves in a mirror and just pretty much performing for themselves and just like staring, just checking themselves out for like hours a night and like that's how they get off basically. I've never written or executed something so explicit as what we've done here with this film. I can't say that I was nervous at all. The target market we identified was alternative and someone who goes against the norm, someone who is an individualist, not a communitarian. Although it's very strange because the gay and lesbian communities now have turned Republican and they're very much becoming communitarian. They want things that um, you know, the community tells you you're supposed to have, whether it be marriage or children or, um, you know, pretty conservative lifestyles, uh, which is very ironic, I think. But th there are other people in the gay and lesbian community who are not conservative, and those were the people we were targeting. Well, I think that Steve Balderson is a brilliant promoter, an indefatigable promoter, because he sees his films as if they were his own children. I also see my novels as if they were my own children. They're children that have been autogenetically produced, as it were. And I think that Steve has a similar philosophy of promotion. Namely, he wants his work to be seen by everyone, um, but he's very careful in separating the aesthetic process from the process of marketing. He sees them as two separate trajectories. The one who is filmed is desired. To be filmed is to be desired. To be desired by everyone is to become God. No one appeals to me sexually. Give me a full body condom and I'll be happy. I still don't believe that it exists. And so when I watched the trailer for the first time, I was just suffused with this sense of unreality. It was um, dreamlike, oniric in some sense. It was as if it was a lovely dream and nothing besides. Um, people make offers to me all the time. You know, I've, I've received a number of offers, but very few of them fulfill their promises. And I, don't get me wrong, I trusted Steve right from the very beginning, but I thought that something might intervene and impede the progress of the film. Something might prevent it from being shown, because I have terrible luck. Turning Me On Tour was a series of screenings that were held throughout the United States and abroad. I hosted the Chicago screening, in fact, and for that reason, I haven't met any member of the cast or the crew, which is another reason that this project seems in some sense unreal to me. 
as if it's just an invention of my imagination. Uh, but I hosted the Chicago screening and it went quite well. How do you think uh, Steve's film uh, portrays? Hi Steve, say hello to the audience. We're having a discussion and we're being filmed. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. The truth is, I never realized, and I'm not just saying this because we're on the telephone, I actually mean sincerely, I never realized what a masterpiece this film was until I saw it on the big screen. When the film showed in Washington, D.C., 250 people at the Gay and Lesbian Film Festival there that went to go see the film got up, shouted obscenities, threw things at the screen, and walked down. By the end of the screening, there were about six people left. So it's very strange. You can never tell what someone's going to think of your movie. Even though you've identified your target market, there will still be some surprises. structures in Hollywood and it was built as his sound stage he used it to show his film birth of a nation which in his time was very controversial I think it's completely appropriate that we're playing this here tonight for all of you it is the most offensive film you've probably ever seen <laughs> <laughs> this whole process of making movies in the middle of nowhere and having the people that have believed in the process has been the most overwhelming experience of my entire life so I just wanted to be here to say thank you for making this a reality for me and for everybody that has been involved with the picture. Um, there are a lot of actors here tonight, and I don't want to introduce every single one of you, but I'd just like you to stand up yeah. and look around really quick so that everybody can just see that you're here. Woo! Without you, None of this would be possible, and I thank you very much. I'm looking forward to meeting Steve Balderson with a great deal of excitement and anticipation. At the same time, I know that once I do meet him, that will be the destruction of the illusion. That will be the destruction of my fantasy. I, I, I love fantasies, and I think we all do, because they... They compensate for our shortcomings. They, they compensate for what we cannot experience. And as you know, our, our fantasies always exceed our lived experience. Our fantasies always surpass our lived experience. But once I actually meet Steve Balderson, the fantasy will destroy itself. I want to meet him, but when I do meet him, I know that at that point, the fantasy will have disintegrated and that I'll be convinced of the reality of this film, or the realness of this film. So much easier to text message and email, isn't it? You don't have to deal with the presence of another human being. Mm -hmm. you know, the fact that a person exists at this particular moment, 
in this particular place. You don't have to deal with that person's presence. Mm -hmm. Very strange. This is like a scene from Watch Out, actually. Except I think the camera would be in front of me. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh my god, <laughs> Steve Alderson. <laughs> Hi. Good to you. you too. Um, Thank absolutely. you. How exciting. Yes. I've never ever. The Green Demon. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph Sulia, Steve Falderson. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is extraordinary. This is really extraordinary. I'm so happy to finally meet you in person. And it really is a great honor. And thank you. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll repeat what uh, Lawrence Olivier said in Lawrence uh, of Arabia. That which I owe you is beyond estimation. It is true. You've truly honored me by your film. And I mean that sincerely. Um, on the one hand, you've allowed me to come into contact with my own work and you've rectified some of the aesthetic decisions that I've made, in particular the division of the novel into two parts. That was the only hesitation that I had in relationship to my novel, and I realized when watching your marvelous, absolutely stunning film that I had made the right decision. So you actually allowed me to appreciate my own work, and that is the greatest gift that one uh, artist can give another. And secondly, you've, you've demonstrated to me that um, there can be such a thing as an aesthetic friendship. It's just an extraordinary gift that you've given me, and it really is my dream. Thanks, Joseph. It is, 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 is my dream. It's it is always my dream to actually have an artist of your caliber create something inspired by something that I had created. And, and mm -hmm. it's just, I really don't even know what to say. I'm just so full of gratitude. <laughs> I really am, and I mean that sincerely. Um, I love your film as a film. Mm -hmm. outside of any reference to me, and I want to make this very clear. Mm -hmm. I don't see this as a Joseph Salia film, it's a Steve Balderson film, and I've never said this before. I, I actually hold your work in such high esteem that I would place you right next to my three other favorite filmmakers, Rainer Werner Fassbender, Jean Cocteau, and Nicholas Rogue, and I mean that. I actually consider you to be on their level. And, and anyone who knows me or has taken classes with me on the New German Cinema, because I teach the New German Cinema at, at DePaul University, knows how much I love those directors. And so and I, I mean this, I mean this uh, earnestly. I, it's just such a great honor, and it's an honor to meet you. Thank you, Joseph. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good to meet you. Yeah, I sent out an email saying, you know, please come. This is a reverent film. It's out there. It's wild. And then I sent a couple trailers. And a couple of my girlfriends wrote back and just said, you know, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> and, and it was like, okay, I mean, what am I going to say? You know, you have to handle it. You know, and they're like, I want to see you in the movie, but I just don't know if I can sit through a whole, it looks kind of, you know, edgy and harsh. And I was like, it is, you know, but isn't that the point? I mean, isn't that the point of cinema to, to push the envelope. If we can't push the envelope here, then where can we push it? I'm, over, I'm six feet tall. How tall are you? Taller. One more. You had your, eye, you had your eyes closed, Joseph. Hello, buddy. Hi. How, are you? How are you? I've only seen it in my, the comfort of my own home, so it'd be nice to see it on a large screen. I think she did it. <laughs> Fucking bitch. That is how our courtship began. We dated that's the right word. Every Sunday. It was uh, when we released it on Amazon, um, we were at number 32 in the top 100 art house films the first week of its sales, and that was really great. So this is like, what, that's what's happening right now. Do you have any advice for a writer, or somebody who's working towards publication, or who hasn't um, had a chance to really exhibit any work? Just whatever pops in your mind would be appreciated. Fuck the reader. Would you say? Fuck you say? the reader. And fuck the viewer. <laughs> fuck the viewer. I, I don't, I don't, th I think too many writers today, especially American writers, are kind of chummy and interactive. They want to appease their readers. They want to pacify their readers. They want to flatter them. Fuck them. Write for yourself. Don't write for humanity. Don't write for your best friend. Don't write for anyone but yourself. That's what I would say. Is that don't write for um, the mass-consuming Walmart crowd? No, like because it, your book, because your book, your film won't sell on the Walmart shelves because, good God, there's a right. male ejaculation in it. No, what he's saying is, when you sit down to write something, don't write it for me. Don't write it for him. Don't write it for her. Just write it for you. Yeah. Right. And always remember that art never agrees with the status quo. And if your work is popular, and like, well, I think that we've actually both had a certain amount of success, but I mean, 
extraordinarily popular, then you have failed. Popularity is a sign of failure when we're talking about art, immediate popularity. However, I, I think that this film is actually 10, maybe 15 years ahead of its time. And I don't think that you should write for the readers of today. I mean, that would be my advice to you. That's probably the better advice I've ever gotten from any writer. So I really appreciate it. Being None more. Awesome. All right. The point to me is, for me, it's the bell curve. It's, 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 it's a very traditional concept. I mean, it's, it's this bell curve and the vast majority of the world is right here in the middle. You know, it's in here. And this is where the people that shop at Walmart, and this is the people that go to see big studio movies, and, um, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be a, a part, in my business, you gotta be a part of Caterpillar to be a part of that. And so, there's this whole area, though, on the sides, you know, of the, of the bell curve. And, it, it's got fewer numbers of people, but not everybody has to be in this big section in the middle. You know, not everybody has to go for $2 billion in ticket revenues like Titanic. You know, you can have a successful film if you sell five or 6,000 DVDs, if you've kept your costs under control. People would ask me, why are you making this kind of a movie? Why don't you just make some peaceful movie? Why can't you do something that's more liked by everybody? And I, th I the only response I have to that is, if you're going to make a film outside the system, totally on your own, you have to have something that stands out and gets noticed. I mean, the only opportunity for, for unique artists, for people who think differently, are over here on the sides. One of the things that I've had people ask me is, well, how do you know to even look over there because because the world is so out here, and I agree it is. You're bombarded every day with with newspaper ads, television ads, we all should be in this great big amalgamated um, middle part of the world. Don't think different. Don't think outside the box. Uh, you know, and but but you you just have to figure out. Gee, if everybody's going west, then I'm going to go east. I think at first you have to think about it in terms of being contrarian, doing things different, and. Figuring out what's your niche, what's your thing. If you can identify the people who want to see it before you make your movie, then you can rest assured that what you're doing will get noticed. So my advice is do something contrarian, outside the ordinary, because that's the only way people are going to pay attention. I remember when Mike Patton was here for Firecracker and he and I got to talking and he was producing his own CDs at that point. He was no longer a, a, a big label artist. And he said to me, he said, I can make more money making my own recordings and selling CDs for my website if I sell 5,000 units than if I have a platinum album with a big label. And so I'm targeting myself to a narrow little group and I'm gonna sell my work there and I'm making a great living doing it. And, and I think that's, does, is he big, is he as big as Beyonce? Hell no, nobody knows who he is. It doesn't bother him, he, he, he's got his, his niche, he makes a good living, he's happy, he's artistically satisfied. Write what you wanna write. Don't be afraid to tell the stories you wanna tell. Don't let anybody tell you what story you want to tell. Find a way and make it. I hope that this is proof to any aspiring filmmaker or artist out there anywhere that you can do it. All you have to do is just believe in yourself, have the confidence to just take that first step, and go, just do it. You know, the specifics for any given individual are gonna be the specifics for that individual, and you know, I, I've visited with lots of people about this concept and how to to find their path going down it. Uh, I've got no prescription for for everybody. One one rule fits all, but but pe everybody can do it if they want it.